we know that water is life and there is no agriculture without water. So maybe you can tell us more about the source of the water that is used in this farm. So this being a semi-arid region and we receive very little rains in the year, we uh, teach farmers and also practice uh, water harvesting structures uh, that are geared towards harvesting the little rains that we, we, we get here. And so we do terraces and also we do small dams in the farms. And that's what we teach our farmers, to do small dams and also to do ter terraces that will capture the rainwater that they can use during the dry season. So in this farm we have divided, uh, we have two dams and we have divided them into two. And um, uh, we also have fish in these dams, There's just small dams of uh, measuring 10, 10 feet by uh, around 15 feet, and, but both they are equal in, the, in size. And, and so on the other side we have tilapia and this side we have catfish. But the main aim is to hold water for us for some time. And as you can see inside, we have grown or planted hyacinth weed. And the hyacinth weed helps us to uh, cool, cool that water and also um, prevent evaporation uh, because this area is a bit hot. And, and so that water stays there for longer, a longer period. But at the same time, the hyacinth seeps excess nitrogen that is in that water because we have some poultry on top of the fish pond that drops manure inside and then manure uh, produces worms, worms that are eaten by fish, but at the same time pro uh, provides nitrogen that is seeped by the hyacinth weed. Then we have the hyacinth weed and use it for compost making, the compost that goes back to the farm, and then the farm produces food like um, sorghum and maize, and then we grind that, we feed our chicken, the chicken produces uh, manure that goes back into the fish pond and that cycle continues. So this water here helps us during the dry season to water our crops and that's why we use buckets, we don't use uh, overhead uh, so that we avoid also on other diseases that might be brought by overhead irrigation systems. So th these are our, our fish ponds here. We are calling this the African Integrated Farming System because we have life, some life, livestock here, small livestock. And so the, the, the chicken will drop manure in the fish pond and then the manure will tend to produce worms that will be eaten by the fish. And then the manure still will fertilize that water. And that water will contain some amount of uh, nutrients that will be taken up by the hyacinth weed. And then we'll harvest the hyacinth weed and make the compost, make compost with it. And that water is also fertilized, and so um, we use it in our farm to fertilize also the soil as we do our irrigation. What are some of the methods you can use to improve the quality of our soils? Yeah, so we are using different uh, soil fertiliz fertilization strategies, and one of them is called compost. And the type of compost that we promote is called cold compost because there are three types of compost that are there that exists. One of them is called hot compost that, uh, you know, um, decomposes very quickly because the, the materials used are more succulent or they are more immature. Um, and then there is warm compost where the, the, the materials used are half-half, mature and immature are equal. But the ones that we use here are, is called cold, cold compost because the immature materials are more, way more than immature materials. So that now decomposition here will be slow uh, because the materials will decompose very slowly. The faster the decomposition, the quicker the, the, the compost gets finished in the soil. The slower the decomposition, the slower the, the, the materials take to be you know, absorbed by the, by the plants in the soil. So this is the, type, the best type of compost that we use. And the, all the materials that we are, we are using here comes from this farm. And therefore we know that this compost has no chemicals. So that's the key thing. What kind of materials are you using in your farm to make compost? Is it from outside or is it from your farm? That's important. So compost is number one. Number two, we are getting other uh, fertilization strategies like using the earthworms that eat materials and then those materials uh, become compost, it's called vermicompost, and then um, the earthworms are also food to the fish, we, we, we feed our fish with the, with the earthworms, 
And then we have other compost um, strategies like the bokashi and, you know, any other thing that will help to decompose and it will be uh, degradable and will be used in the soil to fertilize the soil. That's very, very important. So the materials that we use here, I've said, is uh, more, of immature, uh, more of mature materials than immature materials. So we are getting like um, the carbon materials, like uh, sorghum, sorghum straws, uh, maize stovers, the bean trash that already we have harvested our crops, we bring them here, and then we use the hyacinth weed as um, the immature material because it contains some nitrogen. So it's uh, the CN ratio here, carbon versus nitrogen ratio. We have to balance them so that the C, which is carbon, is more high than N, which is nitrogen. Has to be low. Yeah, so this is a compost that was made like uh, two weeks ago. And you can see it has already started to decompose. Um, so in about six months time, uh, between six and eight months time, uh, all these materials will have decomposed and uh, it will be ready for, for planting our crops. And, and so we are using different types of materials. We have leaves from the trees. Uh, we have, um, you know, weeds from the garden. We have uh, uh, mist overs and wheat straws and whatever, anything that we have harvested from our farm. And we bring it here and pile it in a system that will allow proper decomposition and uh, syst systematic decomposition. Um, and so within eight months, this pile will be ready for use. This is another simple technology that we teach our farmers uh, so that they are able to produce uh, more, uh, more, more fertilizers. And uh, this is called, um, uh, th these are vermiworms or the red wigglers as a type of the worms. And their work is to feed on these materials that are coming from our farm. Uh, but uh, here at GBAC, we use these worms as, um, as feeds to our chicken. And also uh, we feed our, our, our fish in the fish pond. But at the same time, the materials that remain here uh, becomes compost eventually, and this is vermicompost that uh, we use in our uh, propagation house. Uh, this is the, the, the fertilizer that we use uh, for raising our seedlings. Uh, but at the same time, this structure slants a little bit so that when we water here, the water uh, flows, the excess water will flow, and, and then we'll harvest this water on the other side, and that liquid there that we get there is called vermi liquid that we use for top dressing our crops instead of using. Um, calcium ammonium phosphate that uh, is chemical based. So uh, everything that we use here is, is organic. Uh, and so we, we make sure that uh, we are teaching farmers on different options of fertilize, fertilizing their crops and uh, growing their soils. This is our seed learning center where we teach farmers on how to save their own indigenous high loom varieties so that they have seeds all around the year. But as uh, the process of, of, of uh, uh, the process of seed saving, but the process of seed saving starts from the dehydrator here, where we dehydrate the seeds instead of using the direct sunlight. We put the seeds inside here so that they dry slowly without the direct sunlight. And then from here, we take them, the seeds that qualify to be seeds, they are taken to the seed bank where we store them for planting the next seasons. These are maize varieties, indigenous high loom varieties. And then we have um, Tephrosia jelly. These are pesticides that we use in our garden. And then we have um, the, the, the lima beans, the climber beans. Here they are drying up. And then you have onions here. These are bunching onions, the seeds that we have already harvested from our farm. They are in the process uh, to become a seed. But before we take them to the seed bank, we have to test them and to, so that we know the viability and the percentage of germination. And then we have um, pumpkins here, pumpkin seeds from our garden. Um, more varieties here of pumpkins. These are different variety of pumpkins from this one. So welcome to our seeds learning center where we save our seeds and also provide knowledge and skills on how to save our indigenous and heirloom seeds. And in here, we have different types of seeds that we have collected from our farm. And so we have uh, uh, simple techniques of saving them so that they last longer and ensuring quality seed. Uh, as you can see, we have glass jars and we have named all the glasses. 
um, so that we have entered every glass in our computers so that we understand or we know that glass number whatever has this type of seed and the amount of seed that is there. So um, we also encourage exchange of seeds because exchange, exchanging of the seeds is our culture. We want to encourage that farmers exchange the seeds that they have as a symbol of a culture and also as a symbol of peace where different communities can come together and so that they can coexist together as, as Kenyans. And so it's a very important uh, principle of agroecology and also of um, uh, this system that we promote because it enhances food production. Without seeds, th there's no food security. Without seed security, there's no food sovereignty. So that's what we preach here, that every, every farmer has to save the seeds that they grow in their farms. But we also uh, give them the knowledge on how to grow healthy seeds, clean seeds that will be able to regenerate and produce healthy food. And so we also have um, more seeds that we put in the fridge. These are special seeds that, um, you know, they are put in a, in a fridge so that they last long um, uh, out of the temperatures that are high outside here. But most of these seeds are seeds that come in and go out every now and then because we want that circulation of the seeds in our garden so that we ensure quality and continuous growth of the crop.